You are listening to KYST 89.3 FM, The Bone, also being heard on AM 1400, The Growler, and simulcast live on local access channel number 22, oh man. Up next, South Tucson Youth Football. All right. Well, that is one way to start off a stream. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, sorry. Good morning, because I gotta, I gotta do the whole like worry on the on the West Coast because it's because it's South Tucson, Arizona, and we are live. We are live and in color. Don't diss the man, or we'll bum rush your your mom. Um, <clears throat> hi, everybody. It's just me here. Uh, I have no idea if it's gonna be anybody else, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I wanted to get another stream in before the holidays because uh, this evening, mid late afternoon, I'm in my car and driving away from my current place, which is where my current setup is, and basically means that I won't be able to stream for a couple days till I'm back on Monday. Uh, short break for me due to work and the girlfriend's work and all that good stuff. But nonetheless, I wanted to finish up week five of South Tucson Youth Football for you right here, and this is a big, big... Uh, stream because this ends week five. This ends rivalry week for two weeks straight. Uh, but most importantly, after five weeks is when the first set of rankings come out. And the only way you're going to see those rankings is going to be on the highlight videos on YouTube. If you watch them, you suffer through Todd Cranberry. He's going to get you the, the, the top ten rankings as they happen every week. Uh, bless his friggin' heart. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, yeah, that's that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be great. We got two games for you to finish up, uh, finish up uh, the week five, and the two ways we're doing that. Our second game is gonna be Diddler's Family Restaurant hosting a big match at the Big Diddle, taking on the Creamy Surprise, a battle of two three and one teams who are one and zero in conference, both in the Gluttony League. Uh, I think they're uh, cross division rivals. They're not in the same division. So uh, if I'm going by how I think I categorize them, uh, I try to make some sense of it. But right now, we've got 1-800-BUY-A-DAD taking on Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park, a brand new team. Uh, a brand new team of, uh, of South Tucson having a, uh, a strong start to, the, uh, to their first season. They are sitting at 2-2. Two and two. They are 0-1 in conference. They lost to the Crash Zone Trampoline Experience, or CTE for short, in uh, Week 4. <clears throat> a close one, 24-18. It was the final score in that one. One hundred Biodad on a three-game winning streak. They are three and one, one and zero in conference, and got a pretty strong RPI. Both teams have a pretty strong RPI. The CSC was a strong conference last year, uh, last season. <clears throat> I'm gonna say last year a lot, but I mean last season. Uh, soon I'll mean last year. That'd be good. Um, they're uh, they're the second best conference based on RPI from the non-conference schedule. Uh, Moist Adventures have the second toughest schedule so far this season. Uh, that only counts for teams they've played. That doesn't account for any games coming up. But it's really not going to get any easier. There's some tough teams in the CSC, and that goes for both teams. One hundred by a dad, 25th out of 60 in the strength of schedule. One hundred by a dad took out the uh, one of the teams with no wins so far. Shifty Lose Arcade, who have just been a complete 180 in the wrong direction. Uh, let's go to Star Watch. Brought to you by Wall to Wall Salve. Don't be a salve, not be a salve. If you're looking for an ointment or a cream, better call Salve. Um, Star Watch starting off with. 1-800-BUY-A-DAD. We got one kid who did not make picture day. Uh, let me find out who that is. That is line. Uh, that is uh, wide receiver Nuggets Malone. Nuggets Malone did not make picture day, so therefore no picture for Nuggets. However, we've got outside linebacker in the middle there. That's Bobby Dumpkins. Bobby Dumpkins. Uh, I think that was a name we borrowed from uh, the cricket thing that I did for about a hot minute. And, of course, on the far left, that is their star player, Running back, precarious situation. <clears throat> precarious situation. Um, still mad that we that that we just came up with Lavernon Shirley as a name just like this week. I, I blame Seth for that one, and that did not. Um, that's the one. Uh, I really wish I could go back and edit some of these, but alas, if there was a way I could, I I would. I, I'd eventually give names for all the players because it's hilarious. Um, anyway, on Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park. There you see all three kids making making their uh, picture day. On the far left, that is their star quarterback, Spencer Gifts. Spencer Gifts. 
Uh, in the middle, that is tight end, whole lot of love. And on the far right, that is cornerback on defense, Lazarus Lazarus. Lazarus Lazarus. If you're familiar with that. Yeah, I know, Cat. It's a terrible impression. That's okay. Uh, Lee Corso is asleep in a pile of relish that Slip pushed him into last night. He's still, uh, he's still asleep. Um, Lee? How's the... He's, he's snoring. He's just found a way to... Not drown in it, but he's just kind of like wallowing in it. Uh, Lee, you like the, uh... Do you like the, uh, the overtly sexual logo one? How about the Biodad hotline? Okay, I think he kind of stirred more at that one, so we're going to say he picked Biodad. Now let's go down to the Muni. <clears throat> as well. <clears throat> you are looking live at Municipal Field number 179 this morning. Good morning. It is 10.30 a.m. on the West Coast. It is the first half of our doubleheader. The kids are out of school because it's Christmas break, but that doesn't mean it's break for football, at least not for a couple days. They get like a couple days off of football for Christmas, whatever. They get a couple days off of football. They don't get days off of football. Anyway, it is Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park uh, taking on 1-800 by a dad. By a dad kicking off left to right on your radio dial. That is Moist Adventures. Oh, is the ball loose? No, they had a trouble getting Lazarus, Lazarus, Lazarus down. Uh, 20 something yard return, didn't see the number there, but Moist Adventures, the away team in white jerseys, orange helmets, and light blue, kind of like the water uh, pants, taking on 1-800 Biodad in their home jerseys of blue with blue helmets and green pants. Nice incomplete pass, good coverage there. Spencer Gifts going to be a little, having a little bit of a tough uh, time here. Spencer Gifts and Moist Adventures running the Marshall offense. So you see, there's a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of handoff, faking handoffs, and that's Spencer Gifts taking off running. First down, and then some. He's going to take it all the way. Oh, is anyone going to beat him? Spencer Gifts in for the touchdown, 63 yards. Moist Adventures on the board to get this started, and you know you spread the field. You get him to buy the, the pass, the 20 to 30 yard pass, and it leaves the left side of the field wide open. Moist Adventures, second play from scrimmage. And uh, that is, uh, actually I do have, uh, uh, asking in the chat about, uh, put, well, will we see them without being them being in all whites? You know, we do have, uh, uh, again, it's, 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 Kind of tough to. Oh my God! What is happening? Those player, those kids are just falling over each other. Well, uh, starting from the 40 is 1-800 uh, Biodad. Good return right there. They got to they got to answer quickly. 1-800 Biodad running Texas A&M's offense. So again, a fast offense, much like uh, much like uh, most of the teams out of the CSC. And boy, was that fast! Oh, precarious situation with a catch. Stepped out of bounds. Only gets the one yard, but he had some room to turn. But just bad foot placement. Uh, I actually did create. Um, Alternate uniforms for all the teams, but I mean it's Alternate uniforms at both home and away so each team has two home and two away two away jerseys or two uniforms rather um, You know it's it's tough because football it's it's really easy to just have them at white and and whatever the the, the Multicolor thing is and Mike Terry gets sacked for a loss of eight by Tremont Williamson It's fourth and 17 the punt units coming out and it's going to be a three and out for 1-800 Biodad. Moist Adventure is looking to play. Punt's going to be taken from inside the 20, about the 20. It's going to dribble. Oh, it's caught by Nick Madison for no return. He had a man right on him. That's the downside when these kids can't punt worth a dang. But Spencer Gifts now with a short field. Already over the 50-yard line. Quick pass. J.D. Holden steps out of bounds. Gets seven. Might have had the first down. It's second and three. And this might be the first time we get to see Moist Adventures in this game uh, put together an offense. You know, they broke free with a, a huge 63-yard run from the second play from scrimmage. And there we see they hand it off. To Marty Mason, 10 yards up the middle, first down, moving the chains. And this this crowd is uh, a little subdued. I think they kind of got shocked. 1-800-Biodad had a very strong 
uh, spring season. They were looking to build on that three games in a row with wins after a, a tough loss in the uh, in their opener to Mama Laganos. You know they they've got a solid team. They were they were absolutely uh, a, if I recall they were um, let me pull up their their stats right now. If I recall, they played in the uh, yeah they played in the participation bowl. They a losing effort. They were ended up ranked ninth in the rank in the final ranking, so they just missed out on the playoffs, and they ended up losing to number ten Casa de Gordoso, hourly motel uh, by a slim margin, thirty one to twenty eight in the participation bowl. Um, <clears throat> Holden with the catch, three yards there, but uh, without a doubt. 1-800-BIADED had an outstanding... They actually were conference champions out of the CSC. Uh, finished 5-2. and two. The only team with a 5-2 and two record in the CSC. A lot of teams at 4-3 and three and 3-4. Three and they uh, did what they needed, but again, a 6-5 and five record was what kept them out of the playoffs. <clears throat> uh, no, no, no prior meeting between these two teams to, to talk about because this is most adventures first season. And boy, what a season it's been. Marty Mason getting the uh, the lion's share of the carries. That's actually, well, only a second. Never mind. It's uh, 11 yards, so he's got 21 yards so far. But Moist Adventures doing a, a solid job of just continuing to move the football up. And it's going to be Mason getting the touchdown. Yeah, I think he deserves that one. Four yards up the middle. It's 13-0. Moist Adventures only halfway through the first quarter of play. And boy, 1-800-BIADAD is just kind of gobsmacked here. They just, maybe it's an early morning, maybe that's why, maybe, I, I don't know what it could be, but they are absolutely uh, stunned right now, and so are the fans, the ones who bothered to make it up early, make it up to the field uh, in the morning, take time off of work to see some football. And nice return by Precarious Situation, had a little trouble getting them down, 24 yards. Starting from about the same spot they did in the last uh, possession, 40-yard line. This is their second possession on offense. And Moist Adventures proven to be pretty slippery indeed. Precarious situation brought down for a loss of one. And that's Alan Kidd with the tackle. The handoff, they read it perfectly. Uh, number 67 missed his block. <clears throat> And that's not a that's not not a good uh, job on the offensive line by Biadad. It's a little disappointing. I mean, you, you're kind of looking. This is this is still early in the season. You know, we're still early in. And situation gets that yard back. It's third and ten. It's still early in in conference play. You know, this is only the second game. But you're starting. You want to start to see separation from the top teams and the bottom teams. You don't want to end up being a jumble in the middle. Because that's how you can just completely lose your season and lose a playoff spot especially when you have see a uh, uh, nice sack there eight yard loss Tremont Williamson yet again a second sack on the quarterback and it's fourth and 18 here comes the punt unit again it's been all moist adventures in this first quarter and there's still a minute and a half to go and I think 100 by that might be smart to just kind of let the clock uh, roll out a little bit as that ball rolls only to the 48. So again, a short field for 1-800 uh, for Moist Adventures. But uh, back to what I was saying about the, the standings, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be caught in a jumble of about five or six teams that are all looking to get to the top of the tables. You want to make you want to see that daylight early on, and Moist Adventures could be. Uh, you know, we got two. Uh, there, there's two 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 teams that are two and zero. Oh, in the CSC in the fun division that's the CTE and Bully Factory uh, 1-800 Biadad the only 1-0 team in conference in the mandatory division so a 2-0 will give them a daylight rather than making it a four a four team tie for first um, but again they're not looking too good right now Spencer gifts third and one from the 39 yard line yeah, Welders of the Universe. I mean, that's that's kind of shocking to me as well. And it's not even like they had a really strong schedule. Their strength of schedule is not that strong. They're they're currently three and two. They did get a win. Uh, they did get a win over. Let me see. Uh, they beat Salmon Sons Gazebo Repair. You'll see the highlights of that uh, among other games uh, with Todd Cranberry. But they did get a win in uh, in what at one point was a one versus two game. 
uh, last season, and now both teams are three and two. I think they met when they were undefeated. That's it's astounding how a season can change and turn on its ear. We got teams that are zero and five. We got a, a brand new team that's the only undefeated. Taxes Roadhouse. We saw them last night. Gifts is looking for the end zone. Caught by Holden. It's a touchdown. Moist Adventures gonna make it 21 nothing with the extra point in the first quarter my goodness my god what a surprise of a result this is silence around the muni <clears throat> extra point is up and good and it's still the first quarter but it's 21 nothing moist adventures over 1-800 by a dad. Uh, going inside the bit a little bit, saying, yeah, new season, new possibilities for each team. The fun bit is, I love how random this is. I don't want the same teams doing it over and over and over. I'd like some consistency a little bit, but I'd like complete just chaos. Like, because all the teams are just the same cupcake default. Like, um, the default roster is just a cupcake setting, so they're all terrible. Um, and then... Each team has three star players, which obviously I can't change after creating, because um, the servers are dumb. And uh, incomplete pass by Mike, Mike Terry. He's only thrown it three times and only got a one-yard catch out of that. Not looking good right now for the passing game. A buy a dad might have to go to the run, hand it off to Situation again, and that's an incomplete pass again. One hundred buy a dad might need to call a timeout and kind of think things over figure out what they are doing wrong and the answer to that is quickly everything but uh, they all have they only have the three star players the playbooks haven't changed from last season that's a catch nuggets malone seven yards fourth and three but i think the punt unit is going to come out again no they're going to go for it balls on the 45 yard line they need three yards you know i think this might be just a, a good intentions but i'm worried that this is going to end up oh they're going to take a quick a second to uh think it over at the end of the first quarter it's 21-0, Moist Adventures on the route over 1-800-BIADAD on the road. But there are teams that are doing really well that are going to be ranked uh, when these rankings coming out come out. I think a lot of the 4-1 and one teams are absolutely going to be... You're going to see a lot of 4-1 and one teams. I think that might be entirely... Precarious situation, 8 yards and a first down. That's a huge, huge... Uh, you know, mental uh, roadblock to get over, to not go three and out. To get that first down, move those chains, and get some offense going. There's a lot of football to be played. I mean, that's the downs the, the upside of going down that big that early. Oh, Mike Terry with the pass. Couldn't hang on to it. It was deflected. I'm looking at the... Uh, so we could have another 4 and one team. Uh, we will have a 4 and one team after this, after the next game. We could have another one after this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I definitely think that the... Uh, oh, we couldn't hold on to it, number three. I don't know who that was. I don't know if that was Nuggets Malone or not. But the punt unit is coming out. It's a shame. It was such a good, uh, good offense. And that's going to pin them back unless that rolls. Oh, what a great punt. And Means downs it. 1-800-BIADAD have pinned Moist Adventures on their own two-yard line. You don't see this a lot. They're going to have to go out of the backfield running it. It's Mason, nine yards, second and one. And just like that, they 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 saw them getting pinned back. They did not get rattled. They just said, you know what, we're lowering the head. They're going to run it out. And even if they had to punt, make it a field position battle, they might not have to. Spencer Giffs out of the back. Empty backfield. Spread. Looking to throw. Going to run. Giffs has got room. He, oh, he just trucked that kid. Oh, he just trucked that kid. Gets 22 yards and a first down. My God. Let's watch that beautiful hit again. Oh, sometimes you just love seeing a 10-year-old get popped on his ass. Alright, a 
step aside to get a beverage. And uh, that is going to be uh, second and seven for Moist Adventures. That kid is not okay. You know, it never gets tiring watching kids get hurt. Um, and that you can quote me on that. Uh, all right, let me make sure I got this good. Okay, we're connected to that. That's good. Pop that up in a second. It is first and ten for Moist Adventures. One hundred by dad has no answer for this. This is this might get out of hand. Uh, way more than way more than we thought. It, it's getting rough. It's absolutely, uh, you know, there's no answer here. One hundred by dad for Moist Adventures. And what does it say about Moist Adventures? I'm looking at who they've who they've lost to, and I, I'm struggling to see how. Well, it's CTE and Danish lose. Both teams are four and one. So that's proven that they, those are some tough teams. Like the Creamy Surprise, three and one. Ballet Bobs, two and three. Those are good wins as well. <laughs> There's nothing better than watching some 13 year old get a serious brain injury. Hey, I don't like hearing that sort of slander. These are 11 year olds, sir, or ma'am. Um, Warren Rouse with the deflection, good defense, going deep. Um, <clears throat> my God. Uh, Oh, we're looking Spencer Gifts from his own 49. Oh, throws it right at Rouse again. Incomplete. He He's acting like he should have grabbed that. I think he that's probably right. He probably should have grabbed that one. Large drop back. Dumps it off to the running back. And it's Mason with a 13-yard catch and a first down. The offense clearly runs through Marty Mason. And what a, uh, man, what a, what a strong offensive drive. This is Billy Geschwendo, the famous Geschwend family. Nine-yard catch, his first. Second and one. And they're in the red zone. Uh, this might actually be the first, oh, the second time, they're, uh, third time they're in the red zone. They've made, had a touchdown both times in the red zone. Of course, the one time they weren't was uh, basically Spencer Gifts running it in himself for 62 yards. That's going to be an easy first down. Whole lot of love. Welcome to the game. Five-yard catch for the tight end. And 11 for 16, 96 yards, one touchdown throwing uh, for Spencer Gifts. He's also run one in, and he's handed it off to Marty Mason, who was looking to get a second one. He runs into a wall, second and inches. They're on the five-yard line. There is so much. You're absolutely right. There is so much fluid. Fluid is a good way to describe their offense. Touchdown, Moist Adventures. Marty Mason is second of the game. And it is a blowout at the Muni. Moist Adventures, 28-0. Over 1-800 by a dad. And this is this is unprecedented. I'm I'm very shocked by 100 by a dad, uh, not you know not even looking like they have a chance. And maybe they just maybe it's the early maybe it's the early uh, well nine yard catch by Williamson, and they use their first timeout. Got some time <laughs> to sign the contents of their lungs after some of their hits. <clears throat> yeah, the there's definitely fluid in the lungs. Nice catch by Wally Callahan. Four yards, falling out of bounds. Gets a first down and moves the chains for 100 by a dead. Personal foul, face mask, defense. And there's your first face mask. So you know what it means. Everybody drink. I'm going to open up a nice can of... Uh, this is... Uh, huh. 
This is uh, straight hops. Like, no beard, no nothing. This is just straight, like, liquid hops. That's the worst thing ever! Okay. Okay. Never drinking that again. Ugh. Mike Terry with the pass. Caught by number 12. I missed it. Was that Callahan again, I think? It was, that was Williamson, I think. I, I missed who that was. And trying to get some points on the board. Terry dropping back. Oh, gets hammered. Speared by the defender. Gets five yards, but at what cost? Third and three, one timeout to go, 54 seconds to go in this game. And Callahan with the catch. Touchdown by a dad. That's absolutely, you know, I gotta say, that's absolutely necessary. Um, I, I think 100 by a dad needed something on this drive. They could not go in 28 nothing. It would have been an absolute disaster. At least they have something to build off of. <clears throat> There's still 51 seconds left to go in this game. Moist Avengers have one timeout. So do Bayadad. This is a chance to really kind of uh, try to turn some momentum. Lazarus Lazarus with a 20 yard return. See what can happen. Spencer Gifts. A lot of time throwing it deep. Caught! Oh, what a catch! JD holding 40 yard catch. 43 yard catch. And a first down just like that. Moist Adventures. They go and say, hang on. This is our game and we're blowing you out. Oh, holding six yards and gets hammered. Gotta watch out. Gonna get a little chippy here. Moist Adventures not messing around. 29 seconds to go in the first half. Spencer Gift's going to take off running. Slides. Gets hit. And he might have been defenseless, but no flags because... Toughen up, kid. Inside the five. Gift's a lot of time to throw. Batted at the line. Incomplete. Second and goal. And if you're by that, you got to hope for at least the time to, to go... to. to Time to expire, or you got to hope that they only can get a field goal out of this one. I mean, you go, you finally get a touchdown, and then they answer right away. Thad win caught in the end zone. They say touchdown, but I don't. He might have not gotten his feet in the end zone in time. I don't know. He might have left his feet. Did he get it down? They're gonna review that. The previous play is under review. They have not shown the re replay uh, quite yet. Let's see. He leaves his feet there oh he is in the left foot the left toe touches the blue paint they they're reversing it are you shitting me sorry are you kidding me oh I'm gonna get fined for that on the radio better pay that bill really well and they're getting the touchdown through Marty Mason was it I think no, that was not Marty Mason. It was, uh, I don't even know who that was. Their backup running back, I guess. They're, no, they're fullback. Wow. Well, uh, in the end, they get the touchdown, and Moist Adventures return to a 28-point lead with 11 seconds. You know, that's what happens. We don't have the re we don't have instant replay. We, you get to see it here because we've got the nice... Um... Oh, was the right foot out of bounds first? Is that what it was? Okay, that makes sense. Precarious situation with the return. Eight seconds to go for one header. Buy it out. They're going to probably chuck it downfield. Try to get something. Um, so, yeah, the 
Uh, we don't have, uh, of course, we up in the studio, they have, uh, they've got the instant replay. We're, of course, watching it and, uh, you know, in the radio studio. But, uh, you know, the instant replay on the field is basically asking one guy who they hope didn't sleep through the, uh, the play and ask him to recall it. It's kind of like asking an old man to tell a story about the youth, his youth. They have an old man on the sidelines to say, Sir, could you please tell us a story about that last play? And that's what happens. And that's going to be the end of the half. And what a half it's been. Not sure why they're still huddling up. Maybe the 1-800 buy a dad uh, coach is going to lambast them on the field and just kind of like yell at them in uh, yell at them in uh, in public. All right, this halftime is brought to you by Nissan. Be sure to test drive the all-new Nissan Laugh Finder. It comfortably seats eight, uncomfortably fits in your stocking for Christmas. So don't do that. Put it in the driveway with the big bow on it. That way all your neighbors will absolutely hate you and they know which car to key. Also, SAP Tucson, youth football would not be possible without some of our local sponsors that made all this possible. Local sponsors such as Francois Crapery. Damn it, he's Canadian. Please, respect his, like, Canadian heritage. Stop asking why there's all this hockey stuff, why they play, ho if they play hockey in France. Stop calling him Francois, his name's Gordy. He's just a dude. Francois Crepery's, like, just the name. The crepes are still good. They're good, come on. <clears throat> uh, of course, you can, uh... You can become a member, uh, a, a frequent, a frequent crepe, uh, a, a frequent member of uh, a visitor of Francois Crepery, and you can join the club of crepists. Uh, the crepist club. You get your crepe kit and uh, some nice little, uh, some nice little uh, merchandise. You can get a, uh, if you if you get enough uh, enough, uh, if you order enough times, you can get a shirt that just proclaims your love of Francois Crepery with a shirt that just says, "I'm a crepist." <laughs> um, you can wear that around town and let everyone know that you're a crepist and that Francois is the place that you go for crepe. All right, that got weird. Let's go to uh, let's go back to second half action. It is 1-800 Biodad starting things off from their own 37-yard line. Down 28. Down big in this game. And there's going to be a review of the play. Turnover. Did Nuggets Malone? Did the ground cause that fumble? They're saying it's mo they're moisted. The call on the field is in fact. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. And good thing the officials got that right. I think the ground caused that fumble. <clears throat> and by a dad. Hang on to the football. It's second and one on the 46-yard line. Crepe murder, arson, and crepe. You listed crepe twice. I love crepe. That's awesome. I'm not entirely certain that that, that reference is to, but I love it. I got a t-shirt from the Francois Crepery that says, please crepe me. Yes, uh, the favorite Nirvana song is crepe me. Um Rodriguez makes the tackle at the 43 yard line. Uh second and eight. Callahan was the intended receiver on the play. That'll bring up third and eight. 27 Mike, 27 Mike, Mike 27. Watch the out, watch the out. Ah, it's blazing saddles, thank you. I I Gosh, that I should know that. And caught by Sean Cade. Six-yard catch, but not enough. It's fourth and three. They're going to go for it. They need to get to the 35 for the uh, for the um, for the first down. Terry, empty backfield, throwing it. Oh, batted down. Could not hang on to it. The, the receiver in question was precarious. Oh, no, it was a precarious situation. Sorry, I didn't want to make that kid uh, 
get beat up at school. Let's number 14. Let's see what he get his name. Back of the jersey. Nope. You're lucky, kid. You're lucky. Good lord. Tentacle crepe. My god. Uh, the squid flavor crepe. Uh, you know, they have savory and sweet. You can get Nutella. You can also get, you know, octopus. You can get some sort of a, like a savory crepe. Like octopus and like radish and... I mean, you know, like, you can get like a ham and cheese crepe. You can get like some like things that are basically sandwiches but in crepes. Why not put octopus in there and have some tentacle crepe? Um... Moist Adventures taking over. They are uh, over, over the 50 already. First and 10 from their opponent's 46. Spencer Gifts. What a game he has had. Tries to take off running. Only gets two yards. But you saw he, if he didn't get tackled there, that would have been uh, possibly another touchdown. Second and eight. Gifts taken off running again, six yards, third and one. And I think they're really trying to just slow down the pace of the game, let the clock kind of run out. You don't want to do too much. Marcelo Fuqua with the tackle. Great name, how to say that one. And a first down. Spencer Gifts yet again taken off running, gets out of bounds. Ball is spotted on the 23 yard line. And again, the story has just been, I sound like a broken record at this point. Hmm. Second and 10, incomplete. But Moist Adventures have just been dominant this entire game Spencer gives wide open catch Lance Walton with the cat with the touchdown. It's 41 to 7. And Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park are stunning. Those who are left here at the Muni, you saw a full uh, set of bleachers. That's because there are security uh, not letting these fans leave because great shots of sad fans. And you can see right behind that bench all the fans of Moist Adventures there on their feet all the noise is coming from that side of the field 42 to 7 precarious situation 15 yards 216 to go in the third quarter and it does not sound like it's gonna be any easier for 100 by a dad Twenty-one yard catch by Wally Callahan. First down. First and ten. Long throw, caught, no, dropped. Oh, that would have just been an amazing play, incomplete, and that really is just the story of this game. Moist adventures, hitting their big plays, coming through when it matters. 1-800 by a dad, not on all cylinders. Jumping catch, Wally Callahan gets 19 yards, first down, but it's just not happening enough at this point. Terry again, back to pass, looking to throw. He's got a receiver. 
Jermaine Williamson fights his way for the first down, 11 yards. This is kind of this has been a good possession for 1-800 Bayadad. They've been slowly, surely just chipping away at the yardage, fighting for those first downs. It's the kind of the thing you wish you could see in the first quarter. And they get the touchdown, and the extra point is good. And there is not a lot of celebration on the sidelines for 1-800 Bayadad. And plenty of Tucsonade around, trying to just hopefully get back on the field. One minute to go in the third quarter, a lot of time. But look at those tries, my god. Just touchdowns every time. And that 98-yard drive that ended in a touchdown is probably the most impressive of all of them. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Still first down. <clears throat> and first and ten from the forty, uh, from the thirty-four. Excuse me. <clears throat> and Marty Mason just wrestled to the ground for four yards. That makes it second and six. Five yards again, third and one for Moist Adventures. Third down. And at the end of three, it's 42 to 14. Moist Adventures, yes, they've earned their ride home. Absolutely. Um, you know, the other kids will not get a ride home. And Mason continues on 10 yards. And it does not look like Moist Adventures is going to stop at all. I mean, they don't even need to throw the ball. They can just run it out, drain the clock. Buy a dad have their timeouts. That Moist Avengers have their timeouts. This game is pretty much effectively over. <clears throat> nice hit there. Lance Walton gets a yard, but he has stopped. And uh, it's also um, I also realize that it's after two, so I'm gonna put on the darts as well. So you might be hearing that in the background. Uh, not sorry. The darts are awesome. If you don't watch the darts, you should. Oh, God, I haven't missed anything because it's only 10 after. <clears throat> and third and inches from Moist Adventures. You better believe they're going to go for this one. Pushing it right up the middle. They don't get it. Fourth and inches. Demarcus Cock. Koch probably, but whatever. Demarcus Cock. Stop there. No yards. And the field goal unit comes out. It's up and it's good, 45 to 14. No sense in trying to go for it on fourth. Game is effectively in the bag. Well, 3.47 to go and precarious situation. Don't tell Biodad that. They're gonna be playing 
to the very end. Excuse me there. Uh, so yeah, Bayadad dumping it off. Quick catch to precarious situation. Three yards, fourth and 13. Not looking good for Bayadad on this play. They're going to have to punt. And this game is effectively... Gonna be over. They're gonna kill another couple minute or two, minute or two off the clock. Arnold Heron with the return, and you can see the starters are already starting to sit for Moist Adventures. They're gonna look on to their next game. Moist Adventures will improve to three and two, and they've got a game with Hoot Nanny's Country Western Daycare. Uh, it'll be a battle of teams at three and two as we start to see some separation in the CSC. Although Hoot Nannies and uh, Moist Adventures are uh, cross divisional teams, much like Biadad. Uh, 1 800 Biadad will have a, uh, a match, uh, a game coming up against Mitch's Toys and Guns. Uh, another cross divisional game. <clears throat> and uh, again, they will drop to 1 and 1, 3 and 2 as well. And Moist Avengers will improve to 1-1. One and, one, and that will leave basically two teams at 2-0 and oh in the CSC. And that is CTE and Bully Factory. And I'm going kind of to take, take a look and see when CTE plays Bully Factory. Because that, be, that could be an interesting game. That's not until week 9. So that could potentially be a, a, a conference championship uh, qualifier game. And Marty Mason, 13 yards. Up the middle, 101. They're just going to let this clock drain. Biodad not even using their timeouts. I think one more running play, and that should be it. Yep, Mason seven yards. That should be the end of it. And it is. They will let the clock run out. No timeouts used. No timeouts needed. Was not nearly as close as we'd hoped it would be, but man, did we learn a lot about the impressive offense of Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park. Spencer Gifts, 339 yards. Amazing job. Moist Adventures. Three total touchdowns for Spencer Gifts. He's your player of the game. Threw for 209. Ran for another 130. Amazing. Amazing performance by this new team, Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park. They get the win, 45-14 to 14 over 1-800-BIADAD. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and get set up for our next game. It's going to be a trip to the Big D, the Diddler Dome, the Big Diddle. Call it what you'd like, or just call it the Muni because it's a municipal field. But nonetheless, what a game that was. Diddler's Family Restaurant taking on the Creamy Surprise. One team will go to 4-1. and one. That will be the winner of that one. And we'll thank you for joining us so far in the first half of our doubleheader in the books. And possession, man. My dad has the ball for six minutes of that 20-minute game. Amazing. Uh, let's take a look. And we've got our next game coming up. Diddlers taking on. What did I miss? I think I missed them already. There we go. Creamy surprise. And 
And so we're going to be getting set up for that one. And let's talk about these two teams. So, again, that, of course, is Moist Adventures winning the mismatched set of NBA bobbleheads featuring players from at least 11 different teams and spanning 12 seasons. So congratulations to them for that one. As we get set up here, you got to tweet that result out. I had to tweet that one out. So uh, we've got the Creamy Surprise and Diddler's Family Restaurant. I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see if they met in last season at all. Did they meet last season? They may not have because they're not. They're cross-divisional teams. They did not. So this is a first-time meeting for Diddler's and the Creamy Surprise. And uh, let's talk about uh, Star Watch first. Star Watch, brought to you by Star Watch, the local access show here on Channel 22. Oh, man. Where two dudes in a basement watch old episodes of Star Search. Star Watch, it's what the stars watch if they would watch Star Search. <clears throat> Diddler's Family Restaurant. Let's see who they got here. All three kids made, made it to picture day. Going right to left there, that is defensive tackle Bo Camry Smith. In the middle is wide receiver Queequeg, Manticore, and their star player. It's the running back, Hexadecimal Porter the fourth. Their opponents, the Creamy Surprise. Both these teams, 3-1, and one, by the way. Um, uh, very impressive, especially after neither team really uh, impressed at all last season. We'll get into that information in just a second. Uh, Diddlers and the Gluttony League in general is become is pretty much based on non-conference play is the best conference in South Tucson this season uh, surpassing the BCC which is last year's and a lot of good teams in there uh, we're seeing Flappy Pappy's Pancake Shanty coming alive with 4-1 and one as a record and of course these two teams 3-1 and one as well a lot of teams with 3-2 and two winning records so far halfway through the season Creamy surprise, that is, in the middle, le left offensive linebacker, Krug Jugman, uh, not pictured, because he missed picture day, is, who is it, wide receiver, Dodecahedron Lewis, and on the left, that is their star quarterback, Q Beagles, if you're a Tech Mobile fan, maybe you remember that one, Q Beagles, the Q stands for Q, uh, Lee Corso is still sleeping in relish, so we're not worried about that. But it is a rivalry game. And of course, because this team, these teams have not played each other once before, we're going to be awarding the trophy for the first time. Uh, it is for the trophy, the rivalry week trophy, that Diddlers and the Creamy Surprise are playing for is the gift of water skis. The gift of water skis. Let's go down to the Muni. You are looking live at Municipal Field number 56, commonly known as the Diddler Dome, for the second half of our doubleheader here on an early, early game. It is about 11.20 a.m. in South Tucson. Diddler's Family Restaurant. Going to be receiving this one there, the home team in their home. Uniforms of green and orange jerseys with orange pants and helmets. Taking on the all-white with brown helmets of the Creamy Surprise. Diddler starting things off with the football on their own 36. Moving left to right on your radio dial here on KYST 89.3 FM. The Bone AM 1400, the Growler. And if you're watching us on Local Access 22, oh man then it is South Tucson Youth Football and we are simulcast with that hexadecimal Porter lost a three on the pass Jakari Haynes throwing that one under center for Diddlers Diddlers had a pretty good uh, season so far 2-1 and one in non-conference with wins over Blind Bob's Firing Range and Welders of the Universe they were one of the teams that knock out Welders uh, right here in the Big Diddle uh, their only loss was to Mitch's Toys and Guns uh, it was an away game 
But uh, they got they came back with a big away win to start off conference play against Kathy's Country Cooking, who were a perennial team that was pretty good last season. Their strength of schedule is seven. Their RPI is sixth overall, so that's a pretty solid uh, showing by Diddler's incomplete pass by Jakari Haynes. Fourth and 13. It's going to be three and out, and the creamy surprise is going to get this football for the first time uh, 25 seconds into this game. Creamy surprise, however, 3-1, and 1-0 one, one and oh in conference play. They lost their opening game to Moist Adventures 28-26, uh, to 26, so a very close loss in the opening uh, season opener. They came back with three straight wins over Tony and Paul's Child Escort Service, House of Gaffaw's Comedy Palace, and they defeated Shoeless Jim's Diabetic Candy Store 21-16 in last week's game. Creamy surprise, solid team. They are looking to run their offense. Uh, that is, uh, of course, the multiple offense, so I guess that's just multiple playbooks going on there. A lot of variety going on there, I guess is basically what's happening. A uh, lot of, I think they're kind of just run heavy, so you're going to have multiple backs and uh, a lot of running in that, I think, is going to be what's happening in this one. I think I'm going to have to double check that. i got to check my notes. I forget how we categorize the Gluttony League. I'm going to look that up right now, actually. Um... And Q Beagle's going to take off running, eight yards. Third and six, trying to make that up for that a little bit. Yes, the Gluttony League are our running happy, our run happy teams. So a lot of teams that have uh, focused running uh, attacks. And going to be three and out for the creamy surprise. They're going to punt that one. It's going to dribble over into the 27-yard line. And a return actually gets 13 yards out of her 768 Norman. 768 Norman with the return for Diddlers. And Diddlers are running the offense of Navy. So expect triple option. Expect a lot of uh, multiple guys in the backfield. A lot of uh, variety. Some trickeration plays if you want to use that term. Uh, and both these teams did not have a very good uh, spring season. We're going to go ahead and look at how they did. Um, Gluttony League was not a strong conference last season. The fall might be suiting them a little better. Diddlers finished 4-6 and six overall. Uh, and Creamy Surprise finished 5-5. Five and five, So they finished at 500. And uh, obviously because of that, neither team made any of our bowl movements. Uh, neither of them even made it to the uh, championship game. The Gluttony League Championship was, was uh, battled up, battled between uh, Tremors Pizza and the Binging Texan. Tremors Pizza ultimately won that one. But neither, uh, the Gluttony League, if I recall, did not have a representative in the, in the playoffs. So that would be the only uh, conference that did not have any so any any teams ranked in the top ten at the end of the season. They were not a very good conference, but it's looking pretty good for the Gluttony League now. A huge 180, and Haynes is being stopped. He's on the opposing 45, but it's third and eight. It's not an easy uh, conversion here. He's gonna chuck it. Cody Eaton gets five yards, fourth and three. Now this is kind of in that no man's land where it could be a, a four a four down territory because it's too far for the field goal. It's too close to punt. And it's caught Ricardo Hoffman, eight yards, moving the chains. This crowd in the Diddle Dome, Diddler Dome, the 80,000 strong here in South Tucson. <clears throat> and Haynes is brought down for a loss of two, second and 12. Three yards on the play. That'll bring up second and 12. Third and, 15. 
And third and 15. Long pass caught by Hexadecimal Porter, the fourth, 29 yards from out of the backfield. Porter, the running back. I forgot that I, I changed Hexadecimal Porter's number to 1-0 because it's in Hexadecimal. That's, that's, that's the joke, folks. Uh, Haynes tackled for a loss. Just, oh, not even using the hands, just using the shoulder and the helmet to just nudge him over. That's rough. Sorry about the noise you're hearing. Uh, it's, I gotta see if I can turn off those uh, Facebook message noises. There we go, sounds off. There we go. And Diddler's gonna kick a field goal here. It's looking to be about, oof. That's gonna be a 30 yarder. And it's, oh, no good. Hits the uprights, and you can just feel the air deflate from the crowd here in the Diddler Dome. Second and 10, no score so far as we approach the end of the first quarter. Dumps it off to Will Rust. He will rust, but he will get tackled. Five yards, third and five. Alfred Tate with a nine yard catch, first down for the creamy surprise. Clock uh, pro approaches. Uh, zero and that's gonna be the end of the first quarter. No score from the Diddler Dome. In a battle between three and one teams. Second and three. Seven, six, eight. Norman with the tackle and it's deflected. Third and three. Cube Eagles. Not a great stat line so far. Two for five. 14 yards. runs it himself into the end zone touchdown creamy surprise and the first score of the game happens in the second quarter extra point is good at seven nothing
Second and seven from the 36 yard line, their own 36. Haynes, third and nine. Struggling to get something. Points might be at a premium in this game. It's, it kind of happens once in a while. I'm looking at how they've been playing this season. These two teams. Ah, it's going to be Gamara Edwards. Gamera. You know, he's Gamera Edwards. Why not? Fourth and nine. Never seen that name before. It's awesome. Like, not even just, like, on the team. Never seen anyone with the first name Gamara in this game so far. And, you know, creamy surprise. Looking at their, uh, you know, most they've scored in the game is 28 points. But they've been kind of hovering around 20-somethings. Diddlers, they like to run up the score too. They've been scoring and uh, not scored less than 24 in any of their games. So to be shut out this far into the game so far is impressive. And shows how good the creamy surprise are. Creamy surprise. Moving forward on their own 45, trying to move it a little bit further. Oh, they had a overthrown. They had someone wide open. Q Beagles, unfortunately, just for uh, forcing the. And the punt is coming up. Cody Eaton rushing that one up with Diddlers. Second and four. Jakari Haynes goes to the left side, six yards. And gets the first down. Nice pitch play, and that's Hexadecim poured to the fourth for a 15-yard gain. Beautiful option taken. He stiffs arms the invisible man and gets hammered by two guys. And creamy surprise starting things off with the ball again on their own 33 yard line. I apologize, I'm a bit distracted here, so sorry, it's just kind of randomly. Personal foul, face mask, defense. A lot of stuff going on right now, and I'm trying to. So once this game is over, I'm going to be. Hi, Kellen, out of here, packing my stuff and heading up for the holidays. I'll be back on Monday. I hope to be doing something on Monday. Also, the plan is at some point, and this might happen on the New Year's weekend, 
Uh, and this is this is a, this is a reward for those kind of checking us out right now. I don't know how many of y'all there are. Oh, there's a handful of us wa people watching. Cool. Um, <clears throat> nice catch by Dodecahedron Lewis for a 20 yarder. Takes him down to the 16, first and 10 for the creamy surprise. Looking to extend their lead into the half and keep Diddlers with a zero on the board. Second and two after an eight yard gain. Beagles under center, one one back in the in the uh, backfield. Oh, gets clocked! Arnold Cummings gets clocked by one of the Gwishen boys, Gwishen boys, Quinn that time. The mighty Quinn Gwishwend. I can't even say it, Gwishwend, Gwish, Gwishwend? What the hell kind of name is Gish? I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna see if the, I'm gonna type into Google, I'm gonna type Gwishwend and just see what, it's apparently in a, a, it's a town in the German state of Baden-Württemberg. Huh, how does one say this? He did sell like, cause he basically got killed. I don't know if you can barely hear that, but that's a YouTube video saying how to pronounce Schwen. It says it's Spanish, which is crazy, cause I I just saw it's a German, like. T uh, place name, whatever. Creamy surprise kick the field goal, and with 19 seconds left to go in the first half, they kick off again to Diddlers. We're gonna try to put some points on the board. They get as far as the 43 yard line, 768 Norman. Look at that defense. Creamy surprise only allowed 80 yards in this half. That's impressive, and you're gonna win a lot of games if you keep doing that. And having trouble bringing him down. Queequeg, Manticore, 22 yards. That might have been the first time we've seen uh, a catch from Queequeg. And Haynes moving fast. Got Hexadecimal Porter, the two-pronged attack of Porter and Manticore. And they call their second timeout. They're gonna kick this one with six seconds to go. It's a tough, long field goal, and it's missed. They probably could have got another playoff. Arnold Cummings up the middle for two yards. And that's gonna bring an end to the first half. Creamy surprise, going to the big D, shutting them out, 10 nothing. And this half is brought to you by Nissan. Be sure to test drive the all new 2017 Laugh Finder. It comfortably seats eight, uncomfortably fits through the walls of your Italian restaurant. I'll meet you anytime you want through the walls of your Italian restaurant. And of course, South Tucson Youth Football will not be made possible. Would that be possible without the uh, help of some of our local sponsors like Biblical Proportions, Blessed Buffet, Blessed Are the Full, Amen, and a women can come out to Biblical Proportions, Blessed Buffet, and feast on the holiest of offerings at Biblical Proportions, Blessed Buffet. You can part the seas with the amount of food that is on display if you show up the most amazing part about biblical proportions is that our buffet started with just two loaves and five fish and now it is a huge bounty upon which all may feast as long as you accept jesus as your lord 
Biblical proportions, blessed buffet. Uh, there is a fruit section. We there's one one chafing pan. We ask you not to take. It's there. Looks delicious, but you know, don't 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 eat it. Don't don't eat it. Oh damn it! People are eating it. Son of a. Second half kicking off right now. Personal foul. Clipping. Receiving. And we got a clipping penalty, not a personal foul for the face mask, but Akeem Maxwell, a white dude named Akeem, that's crazy, um, and Creamy Surprise are going to start things off on their own 24, and off, and Arnold Cummings brought down for a loss of one. And I gotta say, the way Creamy Surprise are playing, this is an impressive, impressive uh, team. <clears throat> They're looking to go four straight wins. And that's because of Q Beagles and Alfred Tate with the catch, third and seven. They gotta do something to move this football forward. Out of the shotgun, Q Beagles, oh, no one even saw him coming, the sack brings it down, Oliver Olsen, double O, fourth and 12, punt unit coming out, and you can see there was number 78, uh, bless his heart, that kid just trying, um, way late on that one, in fact, probably helped him bringing down his own quarterback, but, you know, such is life. And Hexadecimal Porter, just like that, takes it into the end zone. And we've got a game on our hands. Beautiful pitch play. Porter, nothing but daylight in front of him. Creamy surprise is entirely uh, gobsmacked by that one. Completely left in the dark. Extra point is up, and it is a three-point game here at the Big Diddle. Uh, I, so I apologize to those watching on YouTube when I do this. We have someone new in the chat, CD729, hello, welcome, uh, saying, I'm confused, what is this? Uh, okay, let me go uh, more meta first. This is NCAA Football 2014, the last of the series. I have used Team Builder, the online, uh, site, the, the online create a team thing, to create a bunch of fake teams using the cupcake offense. This is probably good for anyone who might be listening or watching and being like, what, what is this? How does this all work? I created a whole bunch of them and created a fake uh, rec league football, uh, kind of like your local town would have like a local sports like baseball or t-ball or football or whatever, where instead of like being the Tigers and the Lions and the Bears, oh my, uh, you'd be like the names of local sponsors who just gave money to help keep the league alive. So you'd be like Shakey's Pizzeria or like uh, Jenkins Reliable Tire and Auto Body Shop or something like that. So this is the town of South Tucson, Arizona. It's a completely fictional town, even though its name is a real town. I just made it up. Um, and it's been a thing that I've been doing in some form for this channel in a couple of years now. It started as baseball. I used a PS2 baseball game to do their little league. And then I turned it into a football league. And so there are 60 teams, 6-0. And we do it college football style. So there's six conferences, 10 teams a conference. They play a 10-game schedule with seven conference games and three non-conference games. And then there's bowl season, and then there's a playoff. And it's an eight-team playoff rather than a 14-team playoff because that's stupid. Um, and so this is this is one of the many games. So we hope you like it. Hope you find it fun. It's usually more than just me doing commentary. It's just early in the day. That's why I'm doing it right now. But hopefully you like the channel. Hopefully maybe you give it a follow. We do this. We do some other stuff, a lot of different sports things. We do uh, mixed martial arts. I have a fake mixed martial arts promotion where people kind of come and watch the shows. Um, do some other stuff. We play some games sometimes, do some wrestling stuff. You know, all the good stuff. So I don't know how you found the channel, but I'm glad you did. Hope you stick around. 
Uh, that guy could just not even be here, possibly, if, after all that. I don't even know. Um, creamy surprise. So right now what we got is the creamy surprise in all white. Taking on Diddler's Family Restaurant in the orange and green. And that's Will Ross with a five-yard catch. Second and five in the red zone for the creamy surprise. Looking to extend that lead to two scores again. A touchdown would do it. And as the clock continues to dwindle, it would just... It's going to get tougher and tougher for Diddlers to make this comeback, even in their 80,000-seat stadium in the 5,000-person town. Yeah, I forgot to change the default one when I made them. That's why they're the ones at the 80,000-seat stadium. Yep. Cool. So, that's a uh, nice takedown by... Uh, I don't even know who the player is. Oh, and of course, the most important thing is... Uh, there are three players on each team who have uh, boosted stats, and they also have funny names. Oh, look at that creamy surprise spreading the offense. No doubt throwing it, but Wally Kirby, I don't know, that kid just get, did he see a sniper in the crowd? Like, he just he just fell over like he was going to get shot. And it's fourth and seven. Interesting play call there, going for, two, going for two yards when you need nine. Fourth and seven. They're going for it, though, and it's a turnover. Derek Poe. With the catch, could not make it, could not stretch out to the first down marker. And there is a father that is going to be upset with his 11-year-old son. The Poe family, it's not going to be peaceful in the Poe household tonight. Something will be rapping, 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 knocking on the cellar door. And it's probably going to be young Derek as he's locked down there. I just completely bastardized Edgar Allan Poe. I am so sorry to the man who's been dead for years who will never watch this Cody Eaton with a rush up the middle for uh, second and four. And that's a nice... Uh, Incomplete pass. Uh, good, good defense by Creamy Surprise. Diddlers pinned back pretty far in their own red zone. Oh yes, of course we have. A, we, anytime there's a face mask, we have. We call it the drinking game. We don't encourage it to actually happen, but like, yeah. Anytime there's a face mask, we always yell drink because it's kind of the thing that happens a lot. Because that's the one face. That's the one penalty we seem to turn up a lot. I messed with the sliders. I might mess with them again after this season. But yeah. And the punt is a terrible one. It's returned basically off the bounce. Oh, kind of kicking it, playing a different type of football there. Couldn't get a solid return, but Creamy Surprise already have it on the 35-yard line, looking to move downfield again. And this is a, a solid, solid, oh, overthrown by Q Beagles. And it's second and ten. Creamy surprise hanging on to that three-point lead. Nonetheless, here comes the creamy surprise. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, someone was asking. So we also have a Discord uh, for the whole IRM thing. It's kind of just a hangout place. Uh, you know, I keep it up. There's a chat there as well for whenever we do this. Uh, someone in our Hitbox channel uh, was asking for a link. I'm going to go ahead and generate a link for uh, for those in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to join our Discord, please do. Um so Discord is pretty awesome. There you go if you want it. Um, you know, we kind of hang out there as well. It's kind of an additional because we're on Hitbox, we're on Twitch. Most people are kind of tend to watch it on Twitch because of the, of the quality of the site. Uh, but, you know, you could always bring up Twitch and pull up the chat if you're watching on a computer. And, of course, we have the Hitbox. And I have chats up for all three of them, so I will be able to see anything that's being said if you're talking to me in any of these. Uh, nonetheless... We're at the end of three. 
The Creamy Surprise have a field goal advantage over Diddler's Family Restaurant. One of these two teams will go to 4-1 and one and be the early leaders in the Gluttony League. That is their conference. If it's the Creamy Surprise, they will tie with Flappy Pappy's Pancake Shanty at 2-0 and 4-1. and, four and one. If it's Diddler's, then they will be the... Uh, it will be Diddlers doing that in the fine dining division. The Gluttony, Gluttony League is divided, as all the conferences are. And you can go to the Wiki page if you have, if you want to check this. All is on the Wiki page. i got to update the front page so it looks a little more appealing. So it has bigger, like, picture links and stuff. Oh, little juke and jive. Too much sideways motion. Fourth and goal. Creamy surprise. Bo Cox with the tackle. Arnold Cummings unable to get into the end zone. Not a strong running game by Cummings there. They're going to go for the field goal. This is a bit of a chip shot. It's up. It's good. Creamy surprise. Take a six-point lead, but it's still one score. And Diddlers, now with this possession incoming, have a chance to take the lead. After all of this, after it seemed to be like the creamy surprise has dominated this game, they have not dominated where it matters, and that's on the scoreboard. It's still a one-score game. And Diddlers, through Jakari Haynes, on their own 39, can take the lead with a touchdown. There's a handoff to Hexadecimal Porter, the fourth, no gain. Right, runs right into his line, could not get any sort of a uh, break. And Porter with a six-yard catch, third and four. And punt unit coming out. Diddler is unable to get anything going there. Arnold Cummings is the opposite of AO Goings. Yes, it is. That's an outstanding line from Candace. Wonderful job. That's a good one. And nice throw by Q Beagles to Victor Hardy. Q Beagles called the play, and Victor Hardy, he knew he'd come. 11 yards and a first down for the creamy surprise. Looking to just take some time off this clock. They can get another score. A field goal will make it a two-point, a two-possession game again. That's got to be the goal at this point, but you can see every time they line up, they're just waiting for that clock to drain. We're under three minutes to go in this, the second half of our doubleheader. Uh, we're going to take a couple, little, a couple days off because I'm heading up to uh, my family. Uh, for the holidays, so I won't be here. Uh, but week five will be in the books. Uh, we'll have the rankings figured out. Uh, I'll get a highlight video hopefully on Monday when I return. I don't think I'm gonna have time to put that together today. Um, but that shouldn't take me too long. I should be able to get that done, done and out on Monday. I'm gonna try to get the rest of the um, I'll get the rest of the uh, the games up on YouTube. But the highlights will probably not come until after the holiday. Um, that will have the first set of rankings after week five is when the rankings come out. And, of course, top ten is where you want to be. Top eight is really where you want to be. That gives you a shot at the playoffs. And you can see Creamy Surprise just letting this clock run down. Under We're going to get under two minutes at this snap at second and three. And a first down will really just be the end for Diddlers. Very different game from our first one. Q Beagle's going to take off running. He's got the first down. And then some not stopping. Forcing a timeout, 20 yards. Bo Cox with the tackle again. 10 tackles for Bo Cox. And Diddler's pretty much done and dusted. Creamy surprise in the red zone. They're going to take it all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Q Beagles takes it himself, 16 yards. And Creamy surprise up by 12. Are they going to go for two to make it 21-7? to Or are they just going to kick the field goal because they're going to go for two? That is what the card says. So there you go. How can I fault them with that one? 
It's two score. It's a two score game no matter what. But Diddlers have just been outmatched this one. Nice throw to Cummings. Runs backwards. Doesn't get it. What are you doing? Oh, that kid's dumb as hell. That kid's dumb as hell. Diddlers, less than a minute for you to go. Oh, nice defense. Marcus Frederick, nine-yard catch, wrapped up in the tackle, denying him the first down. Nice catch down inside the 20, Cody Eaton. Going for the end zone. Oh, it's batted down. Minute one to go, third and 10. Jakari Haynes incomplete. And they might have to try that again. They might try that for the next two plays if they can't get it on third and 10. At this point, you just kind of have to know that you need a touchdown and you still need time to go for the onside kick then you got to get the onside kick i don't know what he was thinking there fourth and ten incomplete just kind of dribbles out of his hand jakari haynes this is the game right now haynes had it in it's deflected gamara edwards Effectively puts the hammer down and puts the nail in the coffin of Diddlers here at home in the Diddler Dome. Using the back of his hand to just... And then dives in celebration as is his trademark. As a 10-year-old would have a trademark. This is effectively going to be it. I think Diddlers may try to use their timeouts to extend this game. But Arnold Cummings gets a first down. You did it, Arnold. 12 yards. And this will effectively be the end of the game. Two timeouts taken, one to go for Diddlers. we go ahead and put that around there. Yep, kneeling it out. This is effectively going to be it. Uh, just again, this is going to be it for us before the Christmas holiday. I hope everyone listening to this right now, whether you are one of the ones who join us in the chat regularly, whether you're here right now, you're not here right now, maybe watching on YouTube, or you're one of our regular YouTube uh, viewers, we know we got people who, who, because of the time zone difference, tend to watch on YouTube. Thank you so much. This has been, this is a blast. I hope if, if you celebrate that you have a great whatever holiday it is. Uh, happy holidays in general because, you know, it's the holidays and I'm wishing you a happy one. That's not really anything that you wouldn't celebrate because it's the holidays. Um, it's fucking cold. Go eat a lot and drink a lot and enjoy yourself. That's going to be the end of the game. It is 19-7, to 7, the final score. Q Beagles, the player of the game. Look at that. Two total touchdowns. Not a lot of throwing, but ran one in for a touchdown. And that is going to be it for us. Week 5 is in the books. So be on the lookout for the updates to the wiki page. Be on the lookout for Todd Cranberry and his highlights on Monday when I get back. I'll make that video. Um, and, of course, the YouTube link is on the, at the bottom. It's youtube.com slash irmstream. Uh, Twitter.com slash irmstream. Uh, if you haven't already, you know, follow those things. Check out everything we broadcast is on YouTube as well. Um, we'll do week six probably next week. Uh, look out for uh, Kumite coming back. Hopefully going to do that around New Year's weekend. I don't know what days exactly. I'm going to hopefully have two of them for you. Kumite, Kumite 33 is in, is uh, just got finished last night. Kumite 34, uh, I just got to do the commentary. Just got to get the commentary recorded for that. Uh, I'm going inside the bit, whatever, but Committee 34 and 33 will hopefully be airing soon. Uh, the whole 
in in storyline reasoning for that is that Mr. Naga held us held us up for money, uh, withheld the videos. We couldn't air it, so we had to answer and say yes, we'll pay you money, Mr. Naga, and may you live for ten thousand years. Um, so that's coming back soon. Uh, I don't know when LOA is going to come back. I'm bringing my Xbox home with me and hopefully working on LOA a little bit because uh, there's just been something I've been meaning to work on for that. To, that's the one thing that's kind of keeping me from getting it started. Uh, it's also going to be really tough to do that in South Tucson over at the same time, and I started South Tucson late, so LOA may start late as well. But it's happening, I promise you. And, of course, the Corso Cup will happen after that, which is a knockout tournament of South Tucson teams. That's going to happen, too. HCL is going to come back. Loads of fun stuff. 2017 is going to be a huge year now that we're going to be back, now that i got a full setup. Once we get past the holidays and all the things going on. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great holiday. I hope you enjoy the stream. I hope you continue to enjoy the stream. I hope you share the word, spread the word a little bit. Tell people who might think like this that uh, maybe they'd like it. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go and pack because i got to leave in like an hour and a half or two. So uh, you guys have a lovely holiday. That's going to be it from us. I'll get these up on, on, YouTube, so on YouTube soon. Check on the Twitter. I'll be hanging out in Discord as well. We'll be watching the darts. The darts are going on. The darts are great if you have ESPN3. And I'm rambling at this point. So good night from South Tucson. Good night from South Tucson. It's friggin' 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. It's noon there. Good afternoon from South Tucson. <laughs>